All right, good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining today's session. So today we are going to be looking at getting started with Power to Meet. And um, over the week in this course, we have um, talked about Power Apps. We actually started with introduction to Power Platform, we talked about the of Power Platform, the components, and we explained each of the components. Um, previous classes, we've also had discussions around Canvas app, model-driven app, and today we're moving on to Power Automate. Some of us might be wondering, oh, what's Power Automate? We'll get there. So yes, get started with Power Automate. My name is Victoria Gwai. I'm a Microsoft's most valuable professional in the business application. I'm a Microsoft certified professional, a Microsoft certified trainer, and also a business application developer. So what do I do? I automate business processes using the Microsoft Power Platform. And you can connect to me, connect with me on LinkedIn and on Twitter, on Twitter, Vicky Lala, on LinkedIn, Victoria Gwai. Yeah, so we're going to go on to the business of today. The agenda we have for today is the Power Automate overview, and we're also going to build a very simple flow if time permits. Yes, so move on straight to Power Automate overview. So Power Automate is literally, like the name is Automate, is a tool, a local tool that we use to um, automate business processes. And some people might be wondering, oh, what what is why are we mentioning automating the definition? So before or previously, Power Automate was called flows, and it is literally a series of actions, series of steps that we use to perform to get things done. So Power Automate is the engine that allows us to or that works behind the scene to help us get things done. For example, um. I, I know I get, okay, for example, in the traditional world, when you want to request for leave, you have to fill a paper form, then take it to your line manager to approve. And we said that we can automate that process using the Microsoft Power Platform. The first step we would have to do is build an app. Yeah, after building the app, the part that, or the, the tool that you use to to send emails, send approval requests to your to your line manager rather than walking to the manager's office is Power Automate. Yes. And Power Automate brings a lot of values. Yes, a lot. Um, you can automate repetitive tasks. So you know that every day I have to send an email to someone and maybe the email is literally um, the same, the same um, format the same template, just some things that will change. You can use Power Automate to do that so that you can concentrate on other things. Um, common scenarios and capabilities. Do you find yourself downloading email attachments every time? So when there's an email, you download and you upload. You can, Power Automate can help you do this. Then there's the process of getting a new purchase order approved. So maybe someone requests for a purchase order and you need to approve them. Every time, this is like a repetitive process. Power Automate can help you um, and do it. Do you have to log into your website every morning to find the daily numbers? Yes, Power Automate can also help you do this. And in this case, we have, we'll get there, but if you need to log into your website every morning, the aspect of Power Automate that can help you do this is the robotic process automation, and that's Power Automate desktop. So from, from, from this slide, you can currently see a screenshot showing different actions. So we have a trigger and we have two actions. Um, we'll get deep into all this. What Power Automate offers? You can automate repetitive process, manual, repetitive and error prone tasks. I drag on literally the strategic thinking needed to drive my business forward. So if I have to spend so much time doing things manually, when I can also or actually use that time to do something, um, I don't want to say something more important, but something that requires much of my attention, then we can allow Power Automate to do this. 
So you can automate at scale, efficiently scale automation across your organization. And one other thing Power Automate allows us to do is seamlessly integrate with other tools. So especially Microsoft tools, you can seamlessly integrate with other Microsoft products. And you can, Power Automate helps us to accelerate our productivity. So um, some of us might be wondering, if you spend so much time doing um, manual things, you might be less productive. But if you allow Power Automate and do those um, repetitive processes, you can actually, um, you can actually spend time doing um, important things and also accelerate your productivity. And yes, there's intelligent automation. So you can increase efficiency through automated workflows with the power of AI. And actually, AI can be integrated to the Microsoft Power Automate. So the next thing we're going to be looking at is the important concepts in Microsoft Power Automate. I'm sure you've heard me say trigger and actions. So we need to keep this concept in mind when building flows. The first thing you need to know is a trigger. A trigger is what would allow the flow that you have built. So Power Automate is the tool by using to build flows. And a trigger is the, is the thing that will allow the flow to run, to start working. So if I say, OK, when somebody submits a leave request, when someone submits a leave request, send an email. The action is, the trigger is that point at which a leave request is submitted. So it all depends on where the leave request is submitted to. So trigger is like the first step that would allow the flow to start running. The next thing is one or more actions. So your power to promote flow must have at least one action. And actions like the screenshot you saw before are steps, things that you want to happen while that flow is running. Think of trigger as the starting action of the flow. Actions are what you want to happen when a trigger is invoked. We have different types of actions. We'll not be going into deep, deeply into it today, but we have loop, switch, do until, we have apply to it, we have expressions. And yes, loops would allow us run an action until all conditions are met before it can go to the next step. Why switch is, okay, perform this action based on a specific condition, a specific input. Do until is almost like flu, but you have to execute some lines of code. And this has to happen until a condition is true. We have applied to each and expression. Like I said, we're not going in depth into it today. With Power Automate, you do not think of running a flow the same way as you do with Power Apps app. Instead, you perform the activity that triggers the flow to run. In the case of previous flow, Instead of periodically running the flow manually, it would automatically run every time a new email is received with an attachment. So with power, when defining triggers, there are like different types of trigger. Remember we have talked about trigger, what invokes the flow. So there are different types of triggers. When something changes, can trigger a flow. These are the changes that run when the data is changed. Then we have a scheduled trigger, a trigger that is set to run at a particular time of the day. We also have a trigger when somebody clicks a button. So all these are triggers that can, that can invoke um, a power automate flow. The next thing we're going to be looking at is the three types of flows you can create. So there are flows that are event driven when something happens, we've talked about that. There are also business processes business process flows. We call them BPF most times. And oh, that's the typo, we call them BPF, business process flows, and we have desktop flows. So I'm going to be explaining each of them. Event-driven flows are the flows that are literally cloud flows. So it can be instant, maybe triggered by a button. It can be automated when something changes in the database or so, so you don't need to literally go and click on a button to run the flow. And for scheduled, these are flows that you set to run at a particular time of the day. For business process flow, these are flows built to augment the experience when, you, when using model-driven apps. I'm sure you, have, you remember that we talked about model-driven applications last week. 
last two weeks. So these flows are built to augment the experience when using business, when using model driven apps and database. You more like create a guided experience. So you create a step by step process that your users will follow. While the last one desktop flows, and desktop flows are usually, or they were formerly called UI flows. They are like, they are flows that we build to automate processes that are not cloud. So there are some times where we have legacy systems in the organization and we need to automate some processes in that legacy system, legacy systems without APIs and all that. And you need to do clicks of buttons or clicks of your screen. You use the Power Automate desktop to achieve that. And that is called the desktop flows. This robotic process automation flows allows you to record yourself performing actions on your desktop or within a web browser. You can then trigger a flow to perform that process for you. So literally you are going to, okay, first click the buttons, train your bot, train your robot to learn that, okay, when I click on this button, this is the next button to click, this is the next button to click on a web page. Then later it will run that process for you. Um, we're going to be going deeply. Like I said, remember that scheduled flows are flows that you set to run um, at a particular time. So it can be once a day, it can be an hour, it can be on a specific date. And this is what it looks like when you're setting up the flow. For button flows, you have to actually trigger it. So it's either you trigger it from a power apps or you click on the flow itself to run the click on a button on the flow itself to run the flow. The next one is the desktop flows, and this is what it looks like. This is what Power Automate desktop looks like. We use it to automate repetitive tasks where there are no predefined APIs available. So APIs are what we talked about this during the last class, the introduction class. APIs are what we use to interact with third party tools. And there are some third party tools that don't have APIs, but because you can, interact with them physically, you can build robots that will perform those actions for you. So we have two primary types, the UI automation and the web automation. Um, so I've, I don't know, before we go further, I would like to know if anyone has a question, because the next thing we're going to be looking at is the demo and how to build a flow. So does anyone have any question? Please, you can just raise your hand. I see no one is unmuting or raising hand. So we're going to just proceed. So the next part is the demo, and it is literally a technical side session of things and hands on. So we're going to be building a power to meet flow. Now you can create flow from templates. And yes. We have so many templates provided by Microsoft so that beginners like you and I can learn. And I'm just going to stop sharing this slide and show us what Power Automate looks like. So I'm going to share my power ultimate. If you have any question, you can still let me know. I'm just going to drag this to this screen. So you can either go from office.com and click on the app front or you just sign in to make.powerautomate.com. So while that is loading, if you still have questions, let me know. This is Power Automate. Hello, are you saying something? Okay. So I'm just going to proceed. This is Power Automate. You get it from going to make the power 
powerautomate.com or you click on this app launcher and click power automate here. So this is like the landing page, the home page. We have approvals as a tab. So if I've gotten any approval request, I can go from here. If I have, so this is my flows to show you the list of flows that you have. So we have cloud flows, we have desktop flows, and we have shared with me. So shared with me are flows that somebody has built and has, they've also shared it with you, or you build a, build a flow and share it with someone so the person can have a collaborative right. So you can also create, if you want to create from the beginning, remember that we talked about automated cloud flows. The instant cloud flow is schedule flow, a desktop flow, so you can decide to start from the blank that's created from scratch, or you can decide to use templates. So let's go to the templates tab. This is different template that has been made available for us. We'll come back to this. So the next thing is connectors. And connectors are just like the image that we see, what we use to interact with. I don't know if it's taking a while to know, to interact with um, the Microsoft Power Automate. While we're waiting for that, we have data. And in data category, we have tables. These are like your database tables. We have connections. This is custom connectors. You have gateways. You can also monitor your desktop to monitor your um, cloud flows. We have the AI part of things there. We'll not be going in depth into this. So I'm just going to go take us back to templates. Now we have a lot of templates, but the one we're going to be looking at today is saveoutlook.com email attachment in your OneDrive. So the scenario that we're painting is I get so many emails. And there's a particular email that comes with maybe a receipt, and I have to keep that receipt somewhere. So rather than me going to my email every time to download the receipt and go and upload it in OneDrive in a folder, I can actually use Power Automate to do that. And how do you do this? It's very simple. I'll go to so there's already a template, and we're going to click on this template, save outlook.com email attachments to your OneDrive. I'm going to click select. So these are like connections that I need to approve before I can proceed. So I'm going to click sign in. Oh, I'm spelling something wrong. Let's just do this all day. Let's connect it to this. It's supposed to bring. I don't know why it's not seeing my account. Okay, let's do this with maybe another tenant. So I'm just going to search for one and show us what it looks like. So I'll quickly go to make dot power automate. Yes, so I'll go back to create, go back to templates rather, and save outlook.com email attachments. You can always try this on your own later because we will not have so much time to do this. So I just need to click on sign in. I hope it allows me.
Please confirm that you can still see my screen. No, I can't see your screen again. Oh, okay. Give me a second. Okay, I think we're good to go. Let me share. Just, okay. Can you see my screen now? Yes. All right. I'm just going to re authenticate. Okay, I think it's get when the search box Please can you see my screen? Yes. Yes. All right, thank you. Yes, you can. All right, so um the difference between what we were doing before and this is so office 365 is the business one and that's the account i was trying to sign in with whereas i was clicking on the save from outlook so save office 365 email attachment so a specified one drive for folder one drive for business so i'm just going to click on that and we authenticate so it will authenticate itself and i'll click continue now because it is an already built template, I don't have to start from the beginning. All I have to do is edit what has been done. Now, if you see, it already came with the flow. I just have to make modifications. Now, um, the first thing I would do is, okay, this is the folder. This is when the email arrives. I need to configure who the email is coming from. Let's assume that it's coming from my textile ads account. So I'm just going to do a textile ads.com. Then um, that's, I think that's all. I'll go to the condition, expand. So if the form contains, let's do Victoria E. So that, so this condition here is literally to limit the Email, um, the emails that are going to be creating that for that because we can have so many emails but you have to specify if it is coming from victoria now the next thing is this is we want the the um attachments from this email created in our one drive so what we'll just do is add an action called create file because this is already existing template you would modify 
So I need to create the file somewhere. So I'm just going to choose, let me see if there's a folder we can use in OneDrive. We have our root folder, but I just want to check here if there's another folder. Okay, let's just go back to roots. Yes, so I'm going to put this in our root folder. Now, this is also required, but if you email, let's say we have another folder and the email is not coming from Victoria, so we should put it in another folder. So I'm just going to put it somewhere here. Now, that's that. We are done, we're literally done with our flow. What we need to do is save and test. To test, I have to send an email to this account. So I'll go to text stylers. You might not see that part because I'm sharing only this. But I'll go to text stylers, send an email to Victoria. While we're trying to do that, um, does anyone have any questions? So we can attend to questions. Have questions for us after this class. But I need to know, does anyone have any questions so we can attend to questions before? Um, we proceed while we're trying to send the email. So like I said, we can do a lot with Power Automate. I'm going to send the email to Victoria. Okay, I think it's... Okay, so I'm going to say um, call for tests or to meet tests. I'm also going to add an attachment. Let's find attach. So I'll just add an image. Browse from this computer. Good morning, ma. Um, well, question. Please go ahead. For practice, as um, pra practice tasks. Like, so we are trying to attempt some activities on Power Automate. What suggestions do you have that we can use to practice with? Microsoft Learn. Or you can try sending an email, but you can also try modifying the templates that already exist, like what I'm doing now. There are a lot of templates you can modify and test to see if it works for you. What I'm trying to do is compose an email and send to that account so that we'll see what it looks like and how our flow would work. So I've sent the email. Let's go to our screen. Just confirm that you can still see my screen and you can see power to me. So I'm going to open our flow and wait for the confirm that the email has dropped. Okay, yes, yeah, so this is the email. So yes, this is the email and this is the attachment. So what we're going to do now is monitor our flow. We saved our flow the last time. So let's check if it has run. If no, we'll wait for it to run. And this is where you can literally check your flow's action. So this is the name of the flow. This is the description. These are the connections in that flow. And this part is where you would see the run history. So we're going to continue refreshing this. 
while we're also waiting for that, does anyone still have any question? And for the last person that asked the question, did I answer your question? Yes, you did. Thank you. All right. So does anyone still have any question while we're waiting for the run history for our flow? Okay, I see nobody has questions. Let's check back our flow. No, not this. Let's check to see the run history. So I'm going to refresh. Yes, can you see that our flow is running now? At the beginning, there was nothing here, but now we have one entry, our flow is running. So we can click on this to see what stage it has got into. Now the flow has finished running, it ran successfully, and this was the flow. So the condition was true. If the condition was false, this is the part that would run, and this the actions in this no card is what would run. But the email, the sender of the email, see the information about that. The folder came from inbox. This is the sender of the email, Victoria A at Textilers. The name contains Victoria. That's why the true part is running. So this was the file I attached. Now the next thing is let's confirm if it actually created this file. So I'm going to click here. Go to power, go to OneDrive because we're we saying you should create that file in OneDrive for business. And in our root folder, We'll check if that file dropped. So that's but that's how it is um, meant to run. I'm trying to look for I remember that I selected the root folder, so The file would have dropped somewhere and I still can't see it. But that's literally how Power Automate works. And we can do a lot of things. In our next class, this is just like an introduction. In our next class, we'll be going in depth to sending an approval request and all that and more if we need be. But this is literally an introduction and overview to Power Automate. Do we have any question or questions? Before we call it a day. Before we call it a day, yeah, I just remembered. Let me just stop sharing and we share. So we're supposed to answer questions. I have questions for us today. Let me just share the power point slide. So I have questions for us today. The first is this. Which type of power automate flow would the end user? Wait, hold on. Let me just share this. Which type of power automate flow would an end user be most likely to use? when they are trying to automate the process of capturing information from the website. Can you see my screen? No, you stop sharing. No. Oh, okay, let me just switch it. So can you see my screen now? What can you see? So the first question, all right. Which type of power automate flow would an end user be most likely to use when they are trying to automate the process of capturing information from a website and entering it into Excel spreadsheet? The next question, where do we find flow templates? You must build and save templates yourself. There are no pre templates. 
directly from Power Automate Builder website. You need to download the template pack from the Microsoft Learn website. I'm waiting for your answers. The last one, how can data sources be used with Power Automate? Power Automate can only connect to Microsoft data sources such as Office 365 and Azure. Power Automate requires you to build custom connectors to access external data. Power Automate can connect to data sources using one of the 100, 900 plus pre-built connectors or by building your own custom connector. So for question number one, what's the answer? Question number two, I might not be able to see the chat, so you can just unmute your mic to answer your questions. I, I think number one is a business flow, process flow. Okay, who else? Uh, number one should be desktop flow. Okay, who else? Yeah, I will agree with Dr. Desktop flow should be number one. All right, so number one is actually desktop flow. And you remember that I said that for desktop flows, you interact with a website or a web page that you don't have APIs to connect with. So the question is, which type of power automate flow would an end user be most likely to use when they are trying to automate the process of capturing information from a website? So if you need to capture information from a website and enter that information to an Excel spreadsheet, you have to use a desktop flow. The next is, where do you find flow templates? What answer is, is the correct answer to question number two? Please unmute your mic and speak. I think it should be B, directly from the Power Automate website. Yes, you're correct. Let's move on to the last question. How can data sources be used with Power Automate? B. I didn't get that. C, the last one, the last option. Yes, yes, yes. So we have data sources. Okay, okay. So yes, we have pre-built data sources, pre-built connectors, and you can also build yours. So this would um, be the end of today's class. I want to say thank you for joining. If you have any other questions aside today, you can reach out to me. I would also advise that you go through the specific templates that we built today and answer questions related to that. So, yes, thank you everyone for joining today's class. See you in the next class. Thank you, Vicky. Yeah, thank bye you, Vicky. everyone. All right, bye. bye. bye.